I almost did that again. Welcome. I'm Shannon Stefanacci with Pick and Booth Vintage, and I am on the Iron Orchid Designs page today because we're going to do a fun fall decor project. If you look right back here, this is what we're going to be making. Let me bring it up close to you. So here is the F for fall. It's made into a little pumpkin, and then we have these little... Um, the acorns from one of the moles. So we're gonna make this today. So mine that I created says fall. And on the end, <clears throat> look at this. Just some, uh, they're leaves, but you won't believe where I made the leaves from. So stay with me and you will see. Let's see, there we go. All right, so that is what we're gonna be making today. Um, so let's get started. I'm gonna switch my screen so you can see close up. So what I have here is just some wood slices. These ones have the holes. You can get the holes or not the holes, depending if you want to hang them, put them on our, um, maybe on a banner. That'd be kind of neat. Um, first thing you need to do is we're going to just add a little bit of some paint. If you're joining me today, let me know where you're from. I'd love to know. And so I'm just going to I'm going to keep make sure that I keep the holes to the top and I'm just going to not cover the whole piece but just put the paint on in a diagonal diagonal pattern and you can use whatever colors you want I just happen to like the white I think it looks good you can use orange red even black Okay, so you just do this. Now I have five here because I'm going to be putting um, the word fall and that's four letters, but I always want to have, I want to have an extra one just in case I want, you know, add a little bit of some leaves or some fall decor. There's all different kinds of things that you can add to the end of it. But I just think it adds a little bit more to it because the decorating rule, isn't it? Odd numbers, always odd numbers. Okay, so here... I simply just took my wood slices and I added the paint in a diagonal fashion. Now, just to save some time so we're not watching paint dry, I already have a set ready to go. So I'm gonna stick these to the side and bring up my dry ones. I just wanna show you this one real quick. See the leaves down here? Hey everybody, thanks for joining. What are you putting on? I am putting on just white paint onto some wood slices. So down here I have some leaves. Today we're gonna to be using acorns instead. So, but I wanted to show you this because I was playing with them because there's all different kind of things you can use for this. So I'm gonna put that aside for now. I'll leave it up here so you can just see it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to use the Florida Lee mold. There's all different kinds of things on here. Chickens and hearts. And there's a big leaf. That one, these leaves are too big, so we're not going to use those. What we're going to do is we're going to use the acorns down here. There's two sizes. There's a small and a medium acorn. I'm going to use the medium. And these are nice because there's a set of acorns. So one points to the left and then one points to the right, which is kind of nice. So you have options. So we're going to go ahead and start with our acorns. Now, sometimes I'll use cornstarch if I'm worried that it's a very intricate, delicate design, like we will be using later when I use the Harper mold with my letters. But with the pine, uh, with the acorn, it's pretty easy. And with the new designs of the molds with that lip, it makes it so easy to, to get the outline of your, let's see if I get here, so you can get the outline exact on your shape. That lip is just super, super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and just do both at the same time, the left and the right. Okay. 
I like to use my fingers on little designs. If I was doing a bigger design, then I might want to, like last time I was on, I used a, um, a spreader and it cut it off easy. So pop it out. And there we go, there's my little acorn. See how cute? <laughs> Love these little acorns. I have a stash over here. I have some already created because I need to make 10. So right before I came on live, I went ahead and popped out a few. Put this over here. Gonna do a couple more. Let me show you over my left-hand corner. If you watched last week, let me go solo here. Right up here, this was the frame that I used, that I used the um, Trimmings 3 mold on. Look how gorgeous that came out. Now I'm actually able to hang my um, great-grandmother up because I, whenever I inherited her photo from my aunt, I have never been able to hang it up because the, the frame was broken. So I just used the IOD products and created my own decorative frame part on it and was able to hang it up again, which is really cool because... Um, this photo was taken in 1925 and she, and on the back it said she was 43 years old. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Let's go back to our mold. Get you back here. I'm on my last set of the acorns. Now I'm going to be using <clears throat> the acorns as a set. I'm going to glue them on so it's going to actually hold the wood slice up. For those of you that have popped on, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let me just get this last one out. Actually, I'm going to remake this one because I think I was a little chintzy on this right here. So I want to make sure I have a nice solid acorn because it's going to have to hold up my wood slice. Sometimes I get to talk and I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. Okay, there we are. Pop him out. Let's see. You can see all, look at the detail. Isn't that gorgeous? Oops. So let me just show you what we're doing. If you just popped on, see these acorns down here? See how cute those are? I'm using them, I have two. I have one on each side. So that way it will hold up my wood slice. And actually I tried to make it look like, kind of like a pumpkin. Do you have to add the stem and all that? No, but I just thought it would be really cute. Yes, we do sell this mold. Um, it might be on back order, but some stockists might have it. Um, you can check. I've included in the description a link to the online retailers and you can oh thank you uh, you can uh, buy from them online I'm on there too but anyone pick something that's closer to you so you save on shipping okay let's move you out of the way and let's see so what I'm going to do is I am going to put I'm going to show you how I painted the acorn. Now, I just used some gilding wax. You can use any brand, whatever your brand of choice is. I'm choosing two colors because they're very fall, and, they're in the, and copper is very hot right now, copper and bronze. So these are the two colors that I'm going to use for my acorn. So for, let me just put one down here. I'm going to stick one down here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to be creating this. I'm taking just my finger on the top part, and I'm going to get the, the hat, as some people call it, of the acorn. And I'm just going to lightly cover it with the bronze. So I'm going to do all the bronze first, and then I'll go back and do the copper. The copper is very um, powerful it's gorgeous if you guys have never used gilding wax before it's super easy and it adds such um, such a nice touch to your project look at that so just bear with me I have 10 of these to do real quick 
Um, while I'm doing these, I'll look and see if there's any questions on um, the screen. Um, do you have a list of or sell all? We sell all of the online stockists or retailers carry all the products. Some of them are back ordered and should be arriving in mid September, but some people do have a full stock of everything. So you just have to go onto their website and see what they have, or you can actually call too. You can call their stores, I think, uh, or email. You see that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? The gilding wax is, again, super easy to use, and they work good with these molds. I like to do it when they are still wet, the, the air dry clay, because you can manipulate it and bend it if you need to. And we're going to be sticking these on the wood slices as soon as I get them all colored. I'm freezing. Oh no, that's not good. Um, I'm using bronze and copper. I wonder why we're freezing. I hope it's not my internet connection. <laughs> Though you never know. Oh, and everything that I have that I'm using is in the description of this video. Okay, just two more. And one more. Now wait to see when I put the copper on. It is so vibrant. Love it. And again, you can use whatever colors or whatever medium you want. You can use inks. You can use paint. I just love the gilding wax. I love that it shows the. Thanks, Jeannie. Okay, so now I'm going to go back. That was the bronze. Now I'm going to use the copper. But for this one, I'm going to use a brush because let me show you why. <clears throat> I'm going to be able to. I'm going to get in all of that. See how. Look at that. Beautiful. See how cute that is? So let me just stick those up here. Now, I was even thinking that if you were a planner, a, a planner header, <laughs> however you want to say that, you could do fall on one side and then you could do a um, holiday one on the other side. I mean, Christmas, like you could put Mary but you wouldn't probably want an acorn on the other side. So you would have to have something ready to go on the other side, like maybe uh, an ornament. Um, I'm trying to think of what mold might have something cute. And you could even create, you don't have to use the mold. You can just roll the clay up and make and create your own and it will just dry hard and you can use that. But so that'd be kind of neat. So you could maybe not add the pumpkin part <clears throat> and just have fall. And that way you could turn it around and have Mary or Joy or something on the back. That'd be really neat. So I've got all kinds of acorns going on here. <laughs> the, um, the gilding wax is oil-based. And you don't need to seal it or anything. Once it's on, it's on. Something flew on here. Let's get that off. And once these are glued on, if I want to touch up a certain area, I can do that. Oh, do I use a sealer? No, you don't need to use a sealer for this. Okay. The trickiest part is when you glue them on your, rom your wood slices to make sure they stick, they stand straight up. When I did my, my set here, when I did them, I did the letters first and then I put the acorns on. And so when some of them stand, one of them tilts just a little bit to the left, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So there we are. We have all of our acorns created. <clears throat> we have our five wood slices. 
So let's go ahead and glue on our, our acorns so we can get them to stand up. Let's see, does my glue gun on? Nope. We're just gonna take some wood glue. This is gonna make it take a little bit longer to dry. Um, actually, let's, no, nah, we'll just do it like this. A little glue. Now when I'm lining these up, I want to make sure for the front that I use an acorn that has all pointing probably the same direction. I guess you could go either way, but see where it's flat here? I want to make sure that flat part is down. So when I set my, oops, when I set my wood slice up, it's going to stand straight. So I'm going to do the fronts, let them dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to flip them over and do the other side. And I'm just using regular old wood glue. You could probably hot glue. I don't want it too far off of the bottom of the wood slice because if it's too far, it might have it tilt back. It'll be uneven. This also helps because some of these wood slices have uneven edges because of the bark is coming off in some of them. Let's do the last one. There we go. Just making sure they're on very good. Okay, so now I'm going to flip them over and put the acorns on the other side. Any questions? Nope, no questions. You said have a list of all and where. It's in the description of this video. When I started the video, I um, typed it all up. If for some reason it didn't convert over, I'll add it again. Whoops, I'll add it again at the end of the video. Okay, so I want to make sure that they line up. See this? So when they dry, they'll be they'll stand. Okay, and what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and plug in my hot glue gun because when I put the stems on, I'm going to make sure it's easier and faster if I use a hot glue gun than the wood glue, so I'm just going to plug that in real quick. And um, Plus, using a uh, hot glue gun, will, it'll just dry faster. And you won't really see, you won't see it on there either. So let me get the last one on. And I'm just gonna give it a once over just to make sure. And the good thing about this is if for some reason they're off just a little bit, they pop right off and you can put them back on. But they should be fine as long as you have them straight right here. Sorry if I wasn't in the film, I move this over. So as long as you have the edge straight, where you want it to stand, both of them, they will stand perfectly. All right, so I'm gonna flip them back over while those are drying. We're going to go ahead and create the letters. We're gonna be using the Harper mold. And this will go pretty fast because we're only using four letters. So here's the Harper mold, if you haven't seen it. I love this mold, this is my favorite. I love the letters. I use it all the time. <clears throat> and for this, I do use the cornstarch just because some of the letters are fragile and little and it just makes it, they pop out a lot faster. So I take my little brush and I get into the letters. And don't worry about if you put too much in because all I do is I just flip it over and get all the extra out. And then the L. 
So then I just shake the excess off. Make sure this is on. Yep. And then I just simply place it in. And again, there's, there's the lip, so it makes creating the edge of the letter super easy. There's no guesswork. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the letters since I have them all with the cornstarch and ready to go. And I can do one L and I'll have to do another L. Now with these, because they're so fragile, I always flip the mold over and just kind of bend and they kind of just release. See that? That's what's the good thing about the cornstarch. They kind of just fall out on their own. A little help. Now the A, because the A has such a fragile part right there, I just make sure I go from the side generally. Ta-da! Perfect. Okay, I have one more L to create. And there's enough cornstarch in there that I don't have to add anymore. A little cornstarch goes a long, long way. If you put too much in, your clay sometimes the, um, will pop out while you're forming your, your letter. All right, so here we go. Here is our letters. So I'm just going to use some tight bond wood glue. And I'm flipping the letter over and I'm just going to dust it with a little bit of, actually, I'm just going to use my finger. Making sure I'm covering all of it because I don't want my F to fall off. And I'm just making sure. So I'm standing it up. I want to make sure that it's not crooked. <laughs> Can't have a crooked F. There we go. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to leave it laid down, though, so it can dry nice and flat. Oh, thank you. I love the acorns, don't you? They're so easy to do, too. Okay, here's the A. Oops. Let's get them on the right side. A little bit of wood glue. So if you know anybody that loves to make fall decor... And maybe they haven't been introduced yet to all of the fabulous IOD products. Share this with them. They will thank you. Oops. There we go. I just want to move it up just a tad. There we go. They will be able to create and create and create and create. Especially if they're a creative. They're always probably looking for new New mediums and new new toys, <laughs> new supplies. If you notice, I'm standing them up just to make sure. And then, because I want to make sure my letters are straight. All right. There we go. Okay, so while these are drying, we're going to do the leaves. Now, the leaves... There was the leaves on the Florida de Lure or Florida de Lee um, mold, but those were kind of big. So what I did was I'm using the boughs of holly. This, what I'm using is this right here. See this holly right here? But I'm just putting it in just using this part of the leaf. So it's a perfect size because look at this. It fits perfectly on here. So I'm going to use two of those real quick. So let me show you. I'm going to leave this here so you can see it. Now, this was a limited edition. There may be some um, stockists that still have them. You're going to have to check. Uh, unfortunately, I sold out of them. But uh, there are a lot of you that do have these, so you can actually make these leaves. But you can use other, like this one does have the leaves on it. They're just bigger. You can just make them, you know, cut them down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the air dry clay on this one little part. And I'm going to find the edge because the lip is so handy. 
My fingers still have a little bit of glue on it and they're sticking. Okay, so when I take this out, you can see that there's still the little holly. So we're just gonna rip those off. And there we go, there's your leaf, nice and small. And we're going to wood glue this one like that. You see that? And then we're gonna do one more. You can use the, the other side. It's a little bit bigger if you want contrast on your leaves. I just, I just like the smaller size. Pop it out. Make sure I don't have any extra. We don't want those. We don't want the berries. A little bit of glue. And then put it right over here. So there we have our fall sign. It's still, they're still drying, but I just want to show you. Ta-da! All right, let me put this to the side. I'm going to clean my hands really quick because we have to use the gilding wax again and um, I can't have glue on my fingers. This is the look we're gonna go for. Now, I was having a hard time deciding when I did mine, if I should do my letters in the copper or the bronze. Um, so I actually just used a little bit of both. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that, Marilyn. Um, so before we glue the pumpkin stems on and tie the raffia, I'm going to go ahead and just touch my letters with the gilding wax again. I can't speak highly enough about gilding wax. It's so easy to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the dark color of the bronze for my base layer. Now you can paint the letters white to match, but they're already white. So I didn't. So there's the bronze. And then what I did was I took a little, just a little bit of the copper. Oops. My fingers still have some glue on it. I've got a caked stuff on here, so pardon. There we go. So it's copper and bronze. So depending on which way you look at it, there we go. And of course, you don't have to stay in these colors. You can use orange, you can use red, you can use yellow, you can use green, whatever colors match your decor or whatever you see fit for your project. So there's the A with the bronze. I'm gonna touch it with a little, little copper because you know copper is very popular right now. Copper's in, copper and navy. <laughs> there's my L, hit it with a little bit of copper on top. And it doesn't have to be even, and it doesn't have to be the same on your bronze and your copper. It can, they can be a little different. Now, on the one that I made for my demo, I used gold. And, um, but I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to stay with the copper. I love the copper. It's so pretty. So I'm going to use copper, and then I'm going to lightly go over with a little bit of bronze for the detail. So where did I put my copper brush? Here it is. So again, I'm going to use my brush because the brush will get inside all the crevices and everything where I want to. Normally with your finger, you just it just hits the top or the peaks. But with the brush, you can get in the peaks and the valleys, if that makes sense. I just love these. Look how cute. So there's one. Now, if I was off camera and doing this project by myself where I had some extra time and, you know, not trying to get in and out, I would take the time and go along the edges. But I'm afraid if I do that right now, I'm going to smear and it's going to gut everywhere. So, hi, Roseanne. Welcome. Now, if I can get it go out so I can. All right, and um, I do on my site sell the gilding wax, um, but I'm not trying to steer you there. There are a lot of other people that do too. Uh, 
There we go. So we're going to let that dry for just a second, and then I'm going to touch it up with the bronze. So you can see the difference of choosing this one I did gold, and this one I did copper leaves, which are beautiful. Now I'm going to actually dust them with a little bit of bronze, just because more detail, more layers, more authentic looking. <clears throat> now look at that. Ooh, love it. And they don't totally blend with the acorn because they're different sizes and different shapes. So there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put these aside. So <clears throat> you could stop right here if you wanted to because these are adorable as is, especially if you're gonna put Mary or Joy or something on the backside. But if you want them to make like little teeny pumpkins, um, I just found an old twig which is kind of hard to do in Florida because we have all kinds of palm trees, not really like tree trees. But I just snipped off, oops, snipped off a few branches. And then you simply just take your glue gun, hot glue. I do hot glue because it, it takes a little while to dry, it's, so it's a little faster. I just put it, oops, I need a new glue stick. Let me get a new glue stick in here real quick. Sorry about that. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to put a little dop of glue right on the top. Oops, I came out a little fast. And then I'm going to stick my little branch right here. I'm gonna hold it just for a minute, let it dry. Sprinkle, thanks Roseanne, I appreciate that. Thanks Judith. Okay, so the amount of hot glue that I accidentally squirted on is gonna take a second for this to dry. So I'm just gonna hold it like this. So what other words can you come up with that you could use? Let's see, for fall, you could do pumpkin. That'd be fun. You just need a few more um, word circles. You can do pumpkin spice. Uh, not everybody likes pumpkin spice, but I do. <laughs> uh, what else? Fall. Or how about hey there, pumpkin? That'd be a cute one. Or hello, fall. There's so many different options that you can use with this. And how cute would these be if you, because um, they do have a hole, you can make ornaments for Christmas. Ooh, now I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, so that's about dry. Let me just sit that down for a second. Now I just have some raffia. This is, a, raffia makes everything you make better. I'm a firm believer. Ooh, harvest, I like that. Ooh, autumn, very good. So if you guys do make some of these, or these even work great if you're um, if you have a shop, these are great, great um, workshops to do. Who wouldn't want to come make one of these? All right, so let's. I'm just trying to find a good size one. Here's a good one. So I'm just going to carefully try not to pull off my stem that I just glued on. I'm going to tie. Oh yeah. It's not quite ready for me to tie the raffia. So I'm just gonna set that aside because it's still drying. But what I can do is I'm going to just put these back on my shelf and show you up close. Oops. Stay. Let me switch the view. Oops, let's go solo. So here you have them. It says fall, and they all have the stems with the raffia. And again, there's my great grandmother from two weeks ago. Um, let's see, those are marvelous. Thanks. Uh, I, anyway, like I was saying, if you do make these, you do a workshop, tag me. I would love to see what you guys created, what you came up with. Um, and oops, it's now that it's drying. But there's the app. Look how cute. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for watching me today. And thank you to IOD for allowing me to be on their page. And if you have any questions or any of this stuff, drop your, ooh, thanks, gather, and grateful. Ooh, I love those. Those are great. If you have any questions on any of these products or where you can get them, drop me a line. Uh, you can DM me. You can add, put it on here, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. All right. Again, I am Shannon with Pick and Booze Vintage, and you all have a fabulous day.